Over the years, I've learned that marketing is strangely controversial to a lot of people. A lot of farmers have a negative connotation with the word. They think marketing is all about gimmicks, promotions, and advertising, when really it is just about letting people know you exist. Without marketing, you don't have a business because no one knows about you. CSA is a direct-to-consumer business, which means marketing is especially important. There is no aggregator or wholesaler to sell your product for you. Individual people are buying your CSA shares, so individual people have to know about the products you offer. In this video, we're gonna dive into another essential aspect of running a CSA business. We're gonna talk about marketing. We will help you understand the basics of marketing, explain its importance, and share two different lenses you may need to use as a CSA farmer. We'll talk about the significance of storytelling and help you think through your farm's unique identity. We'll share tips for how to communicate your story and uniqueness to your customers and potential customers. At the end of the video, we'll ask you to look inward and see how storytelling, brand work, and marketing fits into the work you want to be doing as a farmer, and we'll explain how to move forward if it's not. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. Let's start with a quick explanation of what marketing is. It is, very basically, your way of telling the right people about the things you sell so that they are aware of them and interested in them, and will eventually, hopefully, buy them. Marketing creates interest and gathers information so that when the time comes to sell, you're able to. With a definition like that, it's probably pretty obvious why it's important. Without marketing, you don't have sales. Without sales, you don't have a business. You have a bunch of produce ripening in the field with nowhere to go. A lot of farmers don't want anything to do with that. They want to spend the vast majority of their time growing food, and many of these farmers avoid things like marketing by working directly with grocery stores, wholesalers, or other avenues that market their products for them. This is great. This is a wonderful way of knowing what you're good at, what you want to do, and opting into a system that allows you to do just that. But CSA isn't like that. If you plan to grow enough food for 50 CSA shares, you need 50 people interested in buying those 50 CSA shares. Like we said in the introduction, it's a direct to consumer business, which means you have to market your product to help folks know who you are, what you offer, and why they should buy your products when they're available. So how do you do that? How do you help folks know what you are selling? Well, first and foremost, you have to understand who you are, the market you are operating in, and what sets you apart. If you decide to enter the CSA space, you are likely going to encounter one of two scenarios. Scenario one, you may find yourself starting a CSA in an area where there are already a lot of other well-established CSA farms. We call this a saturated market. This can be really great because you won't have to spend much energy explaining what CSA is, but marketing will be essential in helping you stand apart from your competitors. In a crowded CSA market, the reason people choose one farm over another often comes down to marketing and properly explaining your differences. This is something I think our farm did really well. When we started a CSA in 2013 in southern Wisconsin, we were one of nearly 80 farms selling CSA shares to people in Madison, Wisconsin. We knew that most people who knew about traditional CSAs already had a relationship to a farmer. We weren't interested in stealing anyone's customers. We decided to offer a less traditional style of CSA to capture a new market. Instead of offering one large box to be delivered throughout the entire growing season, we decided to offer different size boxes and several different delivery frequencies to our customers. We knew that traditional CSAs were perfectly set up to accommodate a traditional household of four to five people, but that it was way too much food for young couples without children, individuals who lived on their own, or folks in their later years who were eating significantly less. Deciding to offer different size shares and delivery frequencies helped us capture a new market in an otherwise crowded space. There are a lot of ways to stand apart and identify your own unique offerings. You might offer customized CSA shares or special add-on products. You might offer recipe support or meal planning services. You might be connected to local chefs and have unique farm to table dinners that no other CSA farm has. You might be doing interesting things ecologically that set you apart. You might offer on-farm market style pickup. You might be a first generation farmer, a minority farmer, an urban farmer, or someone with three decades of experience. All of these things will set you apart and attract a different kind of customer. The second scenario you may encounter when starting a CSA farm is on the other end of the spectrum. You may find yourself starting a CSA in a part of the country where CSA is still fairly unfamiliar. Your marketing will look quite different than what we mentioned earlier. Your marketing will largely be focused on education, helping people understand what CSA means and why it is an attractive opportunity. You won't have to worry about distinguishing yourself from other CSA farmers so much as distinguishing CSA from other avenues of purchasing food in the community. Knowing who you are and what sets you apart and communicating that to potential customers is the cornerstone of successful marketing. But there is another aspect of marketing particularly important for those entering a CSA style business, storytelling. One of the main reasons a customer decides to commit to a CSA instead of securing local food some other way is because they want to be more connected to the people who are growing their food. They want to feel like they really know their farmer. So with CSA, your marketing should give them a taste of who you are. This is called storytelling. 
It's the human side of your business. A lot of people hear the words sharing your story and they get really nervous that it's going to be uncomfortable. Some farms are well known for being vulnerable and bearing it all when it comes to storytelling, but you don't have to go there if that doesn't feel comfortable to you. Storytelling doesn't have to be emotional or touchy-feely, and in fact, you should never share something that you don't want to share. The purpose of storytelling is that it helps your customers understand a little bit more about who you are. You can share things like how long you've been farming, whether you farm with a partner or alone. You can tell people whether you were born on a farm or if you are a first-generation farmer. You can let people know if you are from the community or new to the area. And if you're new, you can let them know what attracted you to your land or their town. You can share something interesting about your career path and how it led you towards CSA. You can talk about your kids or your farm crew. You can tell people what inspires you and motivates you. You can talk about your values and vision for a better world. You can even talk about an off-farm passion that centers you and brings you joy. These are all elements of your business's story. These are all things that can help your customers feel like they know you a little bit better. The stronger the narrative and the more comfortable you are easily sharing it off the cuff, the better. Good storytelling should feel natural. That's why it is so important to only share what you feel comfortable sharing. If you want to bear it all and talk about how your divorce from your husband ultimately led you to discover a love of food and start your dream business, go for it. But if sharing that openly about your life in your local community feels uncomfortable or icky in any way, don't go there. If it doesn't feel right to share it, don't. Your instincts are really important here. There's no playbook. Just share whatever feels good to you and helps your customers get to know you better. Once you figure out who you are as a farm business, what makes you unique and what elements of your story you wanna share, you still have to find ways to share that information with people. There are a lot of great ways to market your product and get your story out there. You can build a website or a blog, engage on social media, send out emails or flyers. You can get your name in local business listings or get featured on a local news segment. You can sponsor local events or advertise in local newspapers. You can promote your products in local Facebook groups or partner with area businesses. There are loads of interesting ways to share your story and what makes you special while also hyping your products. Here's what some CSA farmers we know are doing. Kat Becker, one of our video producers, has always been super creative when it comes to marketing her farm in rural northern Wisconsin. She does tons of small collaborative events with area businesses and gets featured regularly on a local news channel, usually cooking up whatever is fresh and abundant at the farm. Both of these strategies help people know about her and her business while also educating them on CSA more generally. Joy Miller and Rufus Hawk of Kiwaden Farms take a different approach. They are really proactive with marketing their business on social media. Joy has been writing daily posts on Facebook in a series appropriately named Dear Farm Journal for the past two years. Not only is this an incredible way to keep in touch with members and help them see what the day-to-day -day work of farming looks like, it's also an amazing storytelling technique. By sharing farm life daily, folks get to know Joy and her husband. People comment, share, and engage with the content which spreads the word further. When Joy and Rufus expanded their CSA in 2020, they were able to easily sell out with double the shares and think the exposure and reach of their Dear Farm Journal series helped them do so. Social media and other digital strategies are becoming super important tools for marketing and lots of farmers are starting to find new ways to promote their products online. Corinna Bench of Shared Legacy Farm is the queen of digital marketing in the CSA space. She relies on well-known digital marketing techniques like sales funnels, waiting lists, bonus offers, and email campaigns to make sure her CSA sells out early each year. And she teaches all of her tricks to other farmers through her My Digital Farmer podcast and YouTube channel. It's a great resource for anyone looking to get into the CSA space. Corinna's work is so helpful because she helps CSA farmers understand that marketing is something that occurs year-round, not just during the sign-up season. As we explained earlier, marketing is what eventually leads to sales. Good marketing will help people be excited to sign up for your CSA months before you're ready to start selling shares. Focusing on marketing for much of the year isn't something that resonates with all farmers. Like we said earlier, a lot of people get into farming because they want to grow food. End of story. This is a great time for you to think through what kind of farmer you are. Are you a farmer who wants to build relationships within your local community and learn how to tell your story effectively? Are you a farmer who wants to help people feel connected to the person who grows their food? If none of that resonates with you, or worse, if that feels burdensome and heavy, then you might want to explore a different avenue of selling your produce before trying CSA. But if you answered yes, if you are excited by the idea of connecting with local folks, then CSA is likely a great option for you. If you're interested in marketing, but still a little intimidated by it, don't worry. There are lots of ways to sell your CSA shares without having a strong social media or digital presence. You can join a CSA coalition that has marketing opportunities built in. You can vend at a local farmer's market as a way to get the word out about your CSA while still selling some produce now. Or you can get comfortable with growing your CSA slowly. Let word of mouth and happy customers build your reputation for you while learning what they think makes you special. Take a little time after this video to reflect on these questions in your workbook and see what comes up.